Seaborn, please. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Claire Seaborn, and I'm the president of the Canadian Intern Association and an articling student at a law firm in Toronto. Today, we'd like to make three recommendations. The first is that Parliament should amend the Canada Labour Code to extend workplace protections for uh, interns working for re federally regulated companies. The Canada Labour Program and other federal agencies should also adopt an enforcement strategy regarding employee misclassification and internships. And third, Statistics Canada should begin tracking internships as part of the Labour Force Survey. I'm going to take the next few minutes just to provide some context on intern-related issues and expand on these recommendations. Internship generally refers to temporary work performed by individuals looking to gain experience or make connections in a new field. So interns aren't just young people and recent graduates. They're also injured workers re-entering the workforce, uh, or a mother after a leave, or a recent immigrant seeking work in Canada. Internships can be paid or unpaid, and they can be independently organized or part of a school program, such as a co-op or work placement. Although some internships are beneficial and legal, many internships contribute to unemployment, facilitate socioeconomic gender and intergenerational inequality, and violate workplace laws. Under Canadian workplace law, the default is that an intern is considered an employee, unless a statutory exemption applies. The Canada Labour Code does not refer to interns, trainees, or students. As a result, there's some legal ambiguity when determining whether an intern should be considered an employee. In 1989, the Labour Program released a guideline explaining that all training periods must be paid unless the person is undergoing some pre-employment testing that's of a short duration. Next week, a Labour Program adjudicator will begin hearing the case of former Bell Media intern Jaina Patel. He will decide whether Bell was required to pay her wages during her internship and hopefully clarify the interpretation of interns under federal law. Unpaid wages are not the only problem with this legal ambiguity. Under the Canada Labour Code, it's unclear whether interns and students are entitled to workplace health and safety protections as well. You may have heard of the deaths of Adam Kewen, Aaron Murray, Wayne Affleck, and Andy Ferguson. Each of these young men died while in a school internship or co-op placement. Although not all these positions were federally regulated, these tragic events emphasize the importance of health and safety laws and that young workers are greatly in need of workplace protections. Our second recommendation is that federal agencies must adopt enforcement strategies regarding the misclassification of interns. The Canada Labour Program, CRA, and Citizenship and Immigration Canada all have roles to play to prevent exploitation by employers. Our third and final recommendation is that Statistics Canada begin tracking internships. I appeared as a witness before this committee, you'll remember, on March 27th as part of your, as part of your youth uh, employment study. We are glad to see that this committee's report cited our submission and adopted our recommendation for the federal government to begin collecting data. However, to date, no provincial or federal government has collected any information regarding the prevalence or characteristics of internships. Uh, the committee's report also stated that the federal government should work with the provinces to ensure appropriate protections under relevant labour codes. Many of the provincial governments have already taken action on internship related issues. BC and Quebec have employment laws that require all internships to be paid unless they're part of a school program. In May, Saskatchewan included the definition of intern and student learner in their workplace laws and determined that interns are entitled to many workplace protections. Alberta's Ministries for Labour and Education recently announced a comprehensive review of Alberta's employment standards laws for the treatment of interns and in all work integrated learning programs. And uh, in Ontario, the Ministry of Labour is also taking action. One. I actually want to thank Minister Nakfi and Minister Flynn for their work on Bill 18, which would bring interns and students under the protection of workplace health and safety laws. Uh, they've also done some recent crackdowns and inspection blitzes on employers who are hiring interns illegally. Uh, the Canadian Intern Association would like to thank members of Parliament who have already spoken out about internship-related issues. Uh, Scott Bryson, Lauren Liu, who's here today, Andrew Cash, Brent Rathberger, and Justin Trudeau. Uh, we're very pleased to have this opportunity to address the committee. Thank you. Madame Liu, s'il vous plaît, pour cinq minutes. Uh, thanks to the committee for allowing me to uh, sit today. As you know, I'm not a normal uh, member of this committee. But um, I'd like to direct my comments to the Canadian Interns Association and particularly to Ms. Uh, Seaburn. 
uh, Seaborn, thank you for your uh, outspoken advocacy in favor of unpaid interns. Uh, it's a voice that's sorely needed. And uh, today we estimate that there are up to 300,000 unpaid interns across Canada today, which is a very large number. I'd like to concentrate on uh, your, your recommendation that uh, is concerning extending employment standards such as occupational health and safety standards in the Canadian Labour Code to interns and to students. Um, and as you're aware, I tabled Bill C-620, uh, the Intern Protection Act, uh, earlier this year that uh, to this effect, um, and the, the Pop Members Bill 6C, uh, C620 was largely inspired by the case of Andy Ferguson, who you mentioned, uh, a, 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 an intern who was uh, completing his practicum at a radio station and um, was asked to work unreasonable hours and fell asleep at the wheel. So could you elaborate on this case and tell us uh, more uh, precisely how his status as a student and as an intern impacted uh, his rights um, in the workplace. Absolutely. So Andy Ferguson died in November of 2011. As you said, he fell asleep at the wheel. He was doing two positions at the same time. He was working paid for a radio station for some hours, and then for other hours, he was working unpaid as part of a school program. And the combination of both of those hours together were well beyond, uh, you know, any minimum requirements, but because they came, one came from federal jurisdiction and the other job, the, the school uh, regulated internship was provincial jurisdiction. Jurisdiction, there's no regulation in terms of health and safety and the hours of work that he performed. Uh, so uh, he was extremely tired, had a long shift, and, and fell asleep and unfortunately got into an accident. The Alberta government has responded and they've done a comprehensive review of student internships as well as unpaid internships in general. So hopefully we'll see some results that come from that. Uh, Aaron Murray was a, a very similar story where in Ontario he was doing an unpaid internship as part of a school program and worked an overnight shift and was killed the next day. The other two interns that I mem mentioned quickly uh, were Wayne Affleck who was an, an apprentice electrician and was killed during a co-op or a, an a apprenticeship position uh, and Adam Kuhn who was actually only in grade 12 when he was killed at a recycling facility during a co-op. These cases kind of illustrate the gray area that these interns fall under and uh, as you mentioned provinces are taking leadership roles in terms of extending a workplace health and safety standards to these interns. Another case that's been in the media uh, recently has been the case of Jenna Patel who was an unpaid intern for Bell. Uh, could you talk about her case and uh, could you talk about her uh, ask to be remunerated or paid for her work? So next week uh, will be the beginning of Jaina's hearing before a Canada Labour Program adjudicator who will determine whether Jaina was an employee and entitled to wages or whether uh, under the Canada Labour Code she, she doesn't have to be paid. Uh, so hopefully we'll receive some clarity on that. Uh, clearly our position is that she was an employee and was entitled to all the same protections and wages that employees were. Um, so that, that's really what the case is with Jaina and we're waiting for that decision which should come out in the spring or summer. And if uh, Bill C-620 had been in place uh, before these events, before Andy Ferguson's uh, internship as well as before uh, Jaina Patel's internship, would these interns uh, be protected under what was what would be contained in Bill C six twenty? So, if the Canada Labor one, one minute, if the Canada Labor Code was amended to provide some clarity and explain that interns are employees unless some sort of exemption applies, for example, they're in a student program, then that would really provide a lot of clarity. Uh, in that case, Jaina probably wouldn't be considered an unpaid, she wouldn't be an unpaid intern, she'd be an employee and entitled to wages. Um, and you know, Andy Ferguson would have more recourse and uh, there'd be more regulations that would cover his hours of work and you know, can't say whether it would prevent his death, but absolutely those regulations are important. Uh, finally, the Conservative government has, or the government recently announced that it would uh, augment its blacklist of Canadian employers and potentially put uh, businesses found to have violated provincial uh, labor laws on a federal okay. blacklist. Would that affect uh, the issue of interns? Uh, if the Conservative government was adding to its blacklist of employers, absolutely they should include those breaking provincial workplace laws with unpaid interns. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.